Yeah, yeah. What's going on today, La Familia? What y'all got going today, family? Hey, y'all remind me, man, if my energy get low, to make sure that my energy is high, man. Because I'm trying to give y'all the highest level of energy every time I drop one of these videos. Now hit that like button on that tip, you feel me? But on the cool, man, I'm going to give y'all a little backstory before I play this video of 600 Breezy speaking on NBA Youngboy and King Von. Now, I do want y'all to understand that that man, Lil Durk, and NBA Youngboy had a mutual respect for each other. More than a mutual respect, a true love for each other's music. They were both going public and paying homage to each other. So, for that relationship to become so broken in the media, it had to be more than what King Von just said on the internet. Y'all need to understand that. King Von moves strategically. He's only an aggressor when there's a reason to be aggressive. That's the reason why he was looked at as an enforcer. You got to understand that. He is also a worker. So you got to understand that anytime he moves or speaks on stuff, that's the way the brain feels. And that's the way operation moves. Hey, I'm just saying. But on the cool, man, you got a lot of bloggers putting out all this cap because they don't understand what is a crime and what is not. They have never had no run-ins with the laws. They have never been in no true trouble. They don't know anything about the jurisdictional system. So whenever they see somebody speaking on something that sounds like it has something to do with criminal activity, they don't know if it's a crime or not. So they'll tell y'all that it's snitching or whatever. But I'm here to tell y'all that that's cap, man. If you stick around here, you will know what is a rat and what is not. Go ahead and roll that tape. That into the equation. But Vaughn was the aggressor for things that people don't know. Like I personally know that the internet don't know, but everything ain't for the internet. Okay. Y'all hear that? It's more to all these situations than what he's speaking on. See right here, he's thinking about what he can speak on and what's incriminating to him and what's incriminating to the opposition side. He's not trying to rap. He been to the pen before. At least he been to jail. So he knows what can get him in trouble and what cannot. And y'all don't even think about that. When, when, I, first got about out, that, when yeah. I first got out of jail, you know what I'm saying? Like, I supposed to not like young boy because I was with a female that he with. Yeah, that'll do it right there, man. Women start wars, man. They start some of the worst wars in history. And not women in specifically, but men behind women. Simping behind women. Running behind that woman. If that woman is showing you that she has the ability to go mess with another man, let her do that. You continue to do you. Now you should look at her as a means of making some revenue or cut ties with her because obviously she doesn't have your best interest in mind. And Vaughn calls me like my homies can vouch for me. But call me, he call me from just blow phone. Why y'all young dudes be doing all these extras before y'all explain the situation, man? If you speaking your truth and you giving your word as a man, it's going to rain true. It's going to stand out. So we going to know it's true. And young boy is supposed to call him and told him, oh, yeah, your homie over there with my and the sense over there to shoot the crib up. Was that right? Was that right? Right there. That is what is to be brought in the question. And that is what everybody online is saying is right. We're going to get into that. Let's keep seeing what he had to say. Talking about me. I ain't been out of jail for two, three weeks. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really. So I'm. You can tell 600 Breezy get into a lot of trouble with other dudes behind their bras, man. He just seemed like that type, like love to mess with other dudes' bras. Jim Vaughn called me concerned. I swear to God. He called me concerned. But man, where you, where you at? You was or something? Even though King Vaughn got this demonic picture painted of him in the media, these type of situations show that this man still had a lot of love and he loved hard. Oh, he walked off. He made his bitch. Just call the server or us. So young boy been doing sh behind the scenes. Not everything is gonna come to the forefront and be on the surface, man. See, the media only sides with who has the bigger name. It's a clout game. Yeah. Like picking with people that shit people are so that's what all global superstars do to smaller up and coming artists, man. They pick at you and get you off your pivot. His fans, he's just like, oh like that's young boy we love him, he don't do no wrong, but he doing a little so you can't just say Vaughn the aggressor. Well, I meant that particular night. That, that um, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, hey. I don't know why that man, 600 Breezy, killed me so badly with that, oh, yeah, at the end. You did all of that explaining just to agree with Vlad and what he said because you ain't understand the question, man. You gave all that insight for nothing on the code. 
Well, I guess it meant something still because it's setting the internet on fire currently. But the thing is, man, what I want to point out to y'all is the fact that he said that NBA Youngboy called and made a threat. Now, don't get me wrong. In some states, that is a criminal act to make a threat, especially being a felon. But in most states, it is not. You know, you can file a VPO, put that out, say that you fear your life being in danger, and hey, that'll be documented. But as far as, you know, the laws coming to arrest you in most states because you made a threat, that is not necessarily going to happen. And especially due to the fact that, you know, it's like common knowledge that there are statutes of limitations and that by this time, that ban occurred. Now that he's speaking on it, at this moment that he's speaking on it, there's nothing that's going to happen to YB because he said YB called threatening to send somebody over there. And it didn't happen, obviously, you know, and even if it did, he's not speaking on that particular part. That's the criminal activity. You can say what you want, but then when you put those actions into motion, that's when it becomes criminal activity. Now, if he spoke on something that was an actual crime, if he said YB sent somebody over there to shoot up the house you gotta watch what they say he said yb was talking about yb said he would not yb did now when you use those words that those descriptive words that justify a situation like did those turn it into a crime he said it's not a crime those are the words that people watch for. Those are the words that the laws watch for whenever you, you know, you in court. Those are descriptive words. Like we explained the other day in the Lit Yoshi video. Those uh, words, like he said, those are moot words. Those are undescriptive words. Those make the situation open to the point where, you know, all possibilities stand. It raises a sense of uncertainty. So there is no reason to ever look at that as any criminal activity is just a threat how many people threaten you on a daily basis that you don't take seriously you see dudes go live all the time talking about i'm gonna shoot this up i'm gonna step on this i'm gonna step on that that is a threat that's not criminal activity it's just a threat now if they put it into motion i.e a take k i.e you know whoever else went down for those type of situations now y'all gotta know the difference between what is criminal and what is not before y'all get out here dropping snitching allegations on somebody's name because that's a deep thing for the lifestyle that 600 breezy told us that he was involved in as you know a bd a gang member or whatever that came out of his mouth and that's what he said he's affiliated with so the lifestyle that he affiliates with is all about not snitching so when you put them allegations on somebody's name, you destroying their character. I'm just saying. And I'm not even uh, a supporter of 600 Breezy in the sense of like supporting his music and what he got going on. Y'all done seen what I said about him in the past, especially the Charleston White situation. I felt like he froze up in that, in that situation. If you felt that strongly about it to confront this man, y'all should have been throwing some fisty cups. If it's, if it's that serious, you know? If King Von was really your partner in a way that he disrespected King Von, you should have stood on that when you seen that man face to face. But hey, you didn't. I can't respect that. And that's just what it is. But when I see the Internet attacking a man wrongfully, convicted him of being a snitch wrongfully, then, you know, I feel like as a blogger, as me getting on here doing this and speaking about these rappers, it's my job to help y'all see the real insight, to clear that man's name because of these other bloggers putting that smut on there that don't belong there. He's just letting y'all know certain incidents that happened where YB was the aggressor. Hey, it, it, it is what it is, man. You know, YB has an aggressive nature. You can see that. He has that young mentality, young with a lot of money, aggressive, thugging, all that. So he don't care what he say to anybody, especially an up and coming rapper who ain't nearly on the level of him. It's crazy how many of y'all still haven't figured out by now that the person with the most attention controls the narrative, period. It's not even close. Y'all remember the Meek Mill and Drake situation? Meek Mill was dropping facts on Drake and on the game. But since they had the more clout, 
they controlled the narrative. It's the same here. See, nobody knows what YB was doing because he has the attention. It's just crazy to me, man. I got a video talking about how artists blackball other artists and how they'll pick at artists and they control the narrative as if it's that artist that's being an aggressor. Because the little guy, he's always going to be shown in the media as, you know, the crazy one who's attacking the bigger artists for clout and attention. A majority of the time, that's the case. Majority of the time, these literal artists are not chasing clout. It's the bigger artists messing with them because they don't like something that they did or they feel like they biting that person's style or whatever. Majority of the time, that's the case. Now, I'm not saying that's the case here, but hey, man, you never know. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but Breezy gave you a little bit of insight as to how this situation started to occur because at, at the end of the day, at that time, King Von and NBA Youngboy were at least on speaking terms to the point where they can make a phone call. But like I said, women have started some of the worst wars in history. And when I say that, I'm saying it in the sense of the worst wars in history have started over a woman. And that's just what it is. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about all that. Hopefully you truly paid attention. And don't get down in the comment section talking about I'm a YB hater or I'm a King Von hater or whatever. I'm just going to give y'all what I see, man. And that's just what it is. You got to respect somebody when they being real and giving y'all the truth. Not somebody who is catering to the masses feelings. I will never be that guy. I will never be that person that caters to y'all feelings. I'm going to give y'all the truth like y'all brother, man, because I love y'all. And that's how y'all know I love y'all. With that being said, I'm out. But I'm here, and I'm here, and I'm here, and I'm here, and I'm here.